So we had prepared a, a baptismal sheet that was at the back. And I just want to go over a few things before we hear each person's short or long or medium testimony about why they're doing this today. And if you're here and you're thinking, I haven't done it, I haven't prepared, well, hey, you got extra towels, you know. <laughs> but what came to me this week was bizarre in a way. Because the phrase kept coming to me over and over again. Prepare a solemn day unto the Lord. You understand, we have many average days. But the Lord said in the Old Testament, prepare for me a solemn day unto me. Because I'm going to meet with you on that day. You know what? I feel like this is God ordained. I can promise you I hadn't planned any baptism that wasn't in the psyche of my head. But Clayton drove by the church one day. He emailed me and said, hey, I got a bunch of kids and would like to get baptized. I was like, well, this must be God because we sure didn't plan on doing any of this. And then when we started talking about it, all of a sudden other people started saying, hey, I haven't been baptized yet. I, I want to be baptized. So you know what? This is a day that we take and we make it a solemn day unto the Lord. And I thought you can have many witnesses in life, right? There's what you call a reliable witness. Someone that's seen it accurately <laughs> and can describe it. But then you have other witnesses that aren't that accurate. Oh, I was there. I think he was six foot four and weighed 200 pounds blonde hair, but actually it was a brunette and she was five feet tall and weighed 110 pounds. You know what? We have a very reliable witness today. Jesus Christ yeah. is our witness. He already has shown the steps by being baptized himself. No wonder John was shocked. <laughs> like, are you serious, man? <laughs> like, really? And Jesus said, I submit myself to the Father's will as each person here is doing. And I can promise you, this will be one of those things that you will carry with you for the rest of your life. You'll be able to look back at today and say, hey, devil, don't forget what happened September 17th. I let you know where I stand. In my house, there was a mercy killing because I wanted the Heavenly Father to know the man I used to be, I drowned. The actual text <laughs> is Acts 2.38. And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you know what, if you've been around the church long enough, you know that some will try to complicate a simple instruction, kind of like a bad witness. <laughs> some will say, if you're not baptized, you can't be saved and you must speak in tongues or you're not in. And I have one sentence for that. Small-minded people that have no grasp on the saving power of Jesus Christ and what his death and resurrection paid. It is by faith alone, in Christ alone, that we receive sonship, daughtership, status, and heirs to the throne. There is no works that are good enough to be accepted by God. Because my salvation is sure in Christ, I want to make a public statement. That's where baptism comes in play. Obeying the steps he has laid out for those who believe. If you truly believe, make your profession public so that the people and demons aren't confused about where you stand. That's what we're doing today. 
We're making a stand so that people aren't confused, but more so that the demonic realm understands clearly where you stand. And I looked up a little bit of medical stuff here to make myself look smarter than a grade 10 dropout. I don't know if it happened, but we'll see. Before a child is born, it is in a safe spot called mom's womb or room. What's that? <laughs> yes, mom's womb. It is the mother's womb. This little person is surrounded by water. Bingo. To make myself sound like about a grade 10 and a half versus the grade 10 version. It's called amniotic fluid. Oh, that's grade 12. That's grade 12. <laughs> Heck, I just, I should get my GED. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so this water cushions and protects the baby. Keeps a steady temperature around the baby. So the baby is breathing Oh no, so the baby is not too cold or too hot. It helps the baby's lungs develop because your baby is breathing in the fluid. It helps the baby's digestive system because the baby is swallowing the fluid. The fluid also helps the baby to move. In turn, helps with bone development. I started thinking, how much of this could we apply to this? Just like a baby being born out of the water fluid, the water breaks and it is time for new life. So it is with the believer. We show our new spiritual birth by being immersed in water as a symbol of what has taken place spiritually already. Do you know in Acts 2.38 what the word baptize means there in the original Greek? To immerse, yeah. go under, get covered completely. And then when you go backwards and see the baby's development in the mother's womb, you start going, this maybe makes more sense than I thought it did at first glance. <laughs> and out of the water we come, showing this world and the unseen world our residency is in heaven. Why Paul said, live your lives as strangers, not stranger, strangers. Some got the stranger down pat, but the strangers is the kind of the key thought. Peter said, repent. So we acknowledge our personal state of sinfulness and our need of a savior. We are publicly proclaiming that Jesus is Lord and Savior of our lives. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sin. Then, number two, he says, Be baptized. We are submersed into the kingdom of God, not just sprinkled by a little religion. You get that? I think they call that a CE Christian, Christmas and Easter. We're all in. And in Matthew 10, 32, it says this. Jesus says, If you will not confess me before men, I'm afraid I can't confess you before my heavenly Father. So it's serious. It is a solemn day unto the Lord. It's saying, Today, God, I stand here. I can do no other. No matter the cost. This is an oath. You've called me a warrior, even though I feel like a wimp. But with your power, I will move forward in any direction you call me. I will face any obstacle with your power, and I will be victorious. Because to be anything else is spitting in God's face. They can take your life, but they can't take your position. You are already seated where? In heavenly places. They can't take that away. 
you know what? We need to rattle our own brains sometimes. Remind ourselves who we are, where we are. Not, I'm defeated, I feel so overcome. Today I killed the old man that said that. Because he was a pussy. He needs to go down. I'm raised a victor. I'm raised victorious. I'm going to what? Jump over a wall, sing hallelujah, run through a troop. Nice song. We need to live it. <laughs> we need to believe the songs we sing. Especially the ones that are direct scripture. The act of baptism is in obedience to Christ's command. To be immersed. To be baptized is formally committing yourself to Christ and to the church. Galatians 3, 26 to 29 says a few interesting things. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. Through faith, for all of you were baptized into Christ. Have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Guess what? You've been waiting for that rich uncle to die so you can get some inheritance. When you receive Christ, you have an inheritance that's beyond this world. And the good thing is, he pays a lot up front. <laughs> he starts giving you power to look beyond what Satan's trying to push your head into. And he says, you can overcome this. With my power in you, this is nothing. I keep thinking of the disciples. They went from pathetic to powerful. Is Peter the same guy or did he have a twin brother? Because the old Peter was a wimp. And yet it seems like Peter was changed. And you know what? This is part of that change. This is part of that stand that says, I was baptized when I was probably 18 years old. I still have never forgotten getting into the water to this day. I'm 58 years old. That's a long time. <laughs> you know what? The Lord touched me. And his presence never left me. Was life easy? Hell no. Life has tried to take God out of my life. Life has tried to tell me God doesn't care. Life has tried to tell me you're on your own. Suck it up, buttercup. But it's when you realize I'm covered. I'm completely immersed in the power of Christ. Therefore, I can do anything. Not that I've taken every religious course on the planet and filled my brain with all kinds of theology that I've mastered the art of Tai Chi. It doesn't work that way with Christianity or else. Why would so many powerful men fail? Well, they were trained to the hilt. But pride does what? Pride builds yourself up. Knowledge pops up. But love builds up. So you know what? When we come to Christ daily with a humble heart, He strengthens us for the journey ahead. And that journey, no one in their right mind could tell you is going to be easy. You know what? It may be hard. But one thing any Christian can look you in the eye and say, I promise you, you're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, 9, if you do not give up in doing good, you will reap a harvest. Yes. 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 So, not for that. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. I lied. <laughs> it was a small lie, so still a lie. <laughs> you know what? I want to give every person being baptized here a gift. A gift of prophecy. That my mother gave me. I want to tell you, when God speaks through people, it's powerful. Yes. Put it in your bag. Keep it close to your heart. Don't let go of it. My mother wrote this on a piece of paper. 
and I have that piece of paper in my desk. She said, I am calling you, my child. I've put my seal upon you. I have ordained and chosen you. You will minister to the broken people. You have looked to people and trusted in people. Also, you have trusted and looked for help from people. Human help, my child. I am your provider, your counselor, your physician. Trust in me, my child. For I have a plan for your life. What I have spoken to you shall come to pass in your life. I am your sunshine. You are the apple of my eye. I would call you to have my father's heart and feel the heartbeat of God. Move by my anointing. Live in the anointing. For in these last days, I have a people that will sing along with me. And they will herald my return. I am a singing savior. I will sing through my people, my anointed ones. And by taking a stand today, you are saying, God, hit me. I'm here. Pour your oil on me. In the Old Testament, they would pour oil. You know what? The Holy Spirit is what's poured out today directly onto us. And he says, I'll be with you. I'll walk with you. You're not a number. You're my child. So now we're going to take time. Each, we may as well do it in families, I guess. Yeah. Should I hand it off to you? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a few, quite a few people going to be testifying, so we'll try to move through fairly fast. <laughs> So we're just gonna we're gonna start with Sammy and Janaya, and he's gonna share his testimony. I'm gonna pray for him, and she will share hers. I'll pray for her, and then May, you can come with your family and do that as well. And Clayton, Clayton's family will come up after, and so we'll be praying for each of you after your testimony. Do we get changed up? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. My mom and dad told me about Jesus. I trusted him in my heart. I want to get baptized because I really love Jesus. Okay, so we'll just bow our heads and pray for Sammy. Um, thank you, Lord, for what you've done in Sammy's heart today. As he is turning six today, you have opened the heavens and pour upon him your Holy Spirit. Um, we pray, God, as he grows, that the gifts that you've blessed him with, that will honor you, will bring honor and glory to you. And as you pour it on him ever so gradually through his life, that he will use it to worship you and to draw people to you. We pray now, God, that you will bless him with courage to stand for truth, to speak life into others, and to bring joy as he plays music. And Lord, that you will use those gifts to break chains and to bring wholeness, not only to him, but to the people around him. Pray that you'll bless him and you'll give him peace through his life. We will cover him with your blood now in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard about Jesus from my mom and dad and we were going to church. I pray for Jesus to come in my heart in Sunday school. I know that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Today I'm getting baptized because I was a sinner and Jesus saved me. Amen. 
So we're just going to bow our heads again and pray for Janiah. Thank you, God, for this young girl, that you've called her your child today. We pray, Lord, that you will bless her with patience and understanding in meeting others' needs. We thank you, God, for the gifts that you've given her. You've given her a heart for others. You've given her a way of telling your stories through scripture in simple ways so that people around her can understand. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to give her the ability to diligently seek you in all things. We are so grateful for the sureness you've given her in the truth of your word. And we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to bless her with your grace and your mercy. Bless her now, Lord, as she takes this next step in being baptized. May your Holy Spirit fill her mind, her body, and her soul. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So many for me, and to me, and Maisie, and Lennox.
So I pray every time we have a horse race and every night. I know deep down in my heart that Christ is the right path. Jesus showed me that I want to be good and not be mean. He showed me to pray to him, love him, and he loves me and to bless my heart. my first granddaughter and so special to me but she changed my life Lord and Father I, I bring her to you today and ask you to bless her Lord that my daughter will be a leader my granddaughter will be a leader Lord and not a follower even as we see her here in the church and how she participates Lord that she will continue this as she grows older and that, Lord, she'll be an influence to her friends, to those around her, in a good way, Father. So bless her in this way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, I thank you for my grandson, Lennox, a little scientist in our home, Father, as we have seen him. Bless him, Lord, today, and help him, Father, in as he comes to know you, Lord, that... Um, his heart will be kind, his heart will be loving, and Lord, that he will truly know you as his Savior, Lord, and that, Father, he will be a helper to his mother at home and, and in, as they spend time together, Lord. I thank you for my grandson, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today is a very special day. I didn't realize I was going to be used you know, from, our, from our Lord for today, for today's event. But I was always told that nothing is by accident. Where you're sitting today is where you're meant to be today. <clears throat> These are my three, and I have twins as well. I couldn't make it. I've been raising these kids on my own since my daughter was 10, 10 months old. It's been a teaching a lesson. These children have taught me patience a lot. New Year's and everything that I used to do, I gave up my whole life for my children. And every day was for my children. From the day their mother left, I remember bottle, bottle feeding this little one and staying up most of that night at 10 months old. I used to live a different life. I used to do motivational speaking all over Canada. I used to do a lot. And I gave it up 
God had humbled me and kept me home with my children and to teach them this way and every day that I wake up I, I thank our Creator, our Lord in Christ that I am grateful and, and I don't take life for granted for what we're given. <clears throat> they say you treat people how you want to be treated with love and respect and honor. I was touched when we had mentioned that my name because sometimes we don't realize how big of a task and how big of God has a plan for each and every one of you. I, I just mentioned when I from the church and some, something that woke me one day and said, go to church. Go to this one over here. And it was this church I was to come to. God talks to us every day about how many of us actually really listen. He hears our prayers. And I, and I believe that the blessings have come when I see my children and my twins. My twins are 14 years old and they're like 6'3". <laughs> but I remember times braiding their hair and praying and understanding who I am and why God has brought me here. I've been in, in, in so many roles in my life and try to understand these roles. And a lot of times what we go through in our lives to stop asking why, but to be thankful, whether if they're good or bad, whether if you're poor or rich, but to understand that God utilizes each and every one of us as a tool. And sometimes when we lose track, God will break you and rebuild you and remold you of who you should become and the role that he has for you. So today, I continue this journey of what God has, has planned for me. And uh, as I was saying, New Year's, all these special occasions, I'd be home with my children. New Year's, I'd try to take them to their fireworks, but they're always sleeping before we got there. <laughs> so we'd stay home. But I, I realize, you know, that's sometimes we have to understand what God has planned for us and to go through this journey. But today I do this for my children and for myself and my life and the journey that I have. Because now that we help so many people in this life and heal so many people and these demons that we're fighting every day, that I realize that I'm being attacked you know, from these demons. Today I shield myself by baptismal. And I, and I thank, I thank you for this day. Like I said, it wasn't by accident. God is with us today. Christ is here today. Thank you. I always believed in God, but I wasn't sure He was real. That changed when we went hunting for moose on the side by side. The roads were really bumpy, and our side by side tilted. So I started praying to God, and he got us back safely on the road. Since then, I believed in God, and I learned that I need to repent from my sins and accept Jesus in my heart. I am getting baptized today because I love God. Lord, we just thank you for Jesse, and uh, we know that you have good things in store for him. 
that today is uh, is one of those days that you tuck away in the back of your mind and you go, I want to remember this because this was the day that God started something different, something new. So I just want to pray a protection, a courage, a strength over Jesse, and I just pray that you shower him with your love and confidence, so that he knows that you've got his back, Lord. Lord and we pray and thank you for this great guy. Lord, we thank you for Judah. Hold it. Fourteen, that he's my height. That's scary. <laughs> Lord, we know that uh, Judah's growing up to be a strong, strong young man. Uh, but God, I pray that you make his heart soft to understand that our personal strength only goes so far. We need your strength. So Lord, I just pray that you give him a confidence and an understanding that you are the protector of all. That you go before each one of us. That you open doors that would seem almost impossible. And doors that we would have never actually dreamt of going through. But sometimes you bless us in ways that are beyond our, our ability to understand. So I pray you open these concepts up and that you open up the way for Judah. That he will experience the wonder and joy of knowing you. And be confident that you do go before us and that you protect us each step of the way. In your name we pray. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful young girl, Jada, and that you have her in the palm of your hand that you have nurtured her, that you have walked with her, and that you will continue to walk with her, that you have great things in store for her, that you will open up new things, that you will challenge her, that you will stretch her, but that you will always be with her, that you will always walk with her, that you will always talk to her. When she's in the quiet places, I want you to know you can talk to him. And he's going to hear you. He's going to answer you. And he's going to answer you in some pretty cool ways. So don't be afraid to ask God for some stuff. Because God will listen to you. And he will answer you. But the biggest thing is, he's going to cover you with his love. And you will never be alone. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this brother, Clayton. I just thank you for uh, the life he has lived. And uh, and as believers, we do support each other. You know what? Life isn't easy. A lot of people in, in here today can relate to your story. Right? You know what? It seems like no one rides for free, I guess. And uh, the courage that you've shown and said, I'm not giving up, I'm not quitting. Lord, I, I gotta trust in you, God, because I don't have a plan B. You are my plan A, B, and C. So, Lord, I just pray that that you would pour the showers of grace, mercy, of love. You would fill the cracks that were caused by hardship and trial, God, and that it says you will give back the years the locusts took. So, Lord, I pray you start opening that door for Clayton, God. I know you have things in store for him that are bigger than probably what he's willing to even entertain at this point. So, Lord, I just pray that you will shower him with the wonder of your grace, the wonder of your power, the peace of your Holy Spirit, and the oil of joy. God, that man, that woman, that circumstance can never take away, God. I pray you give boldness. I pray you give him back his voice. And the dignity that was tried to be destroyed, God, I want you to know, God, I was seeing you as the complete man you are today. So, Lord, we just commit this family to you for your service, for your glory, but also for your blessing, that you will pour out on them and that they will be a light to the nation around them. They will be a voice for the kingdom and that they will herald the songs of your power, of your
your glory and your redemption. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 join the baptism, you're welcome to do so now. Uh-huh. Otherwise, we're going to start the family and then go through. Just in case you're wondering, this is not the stairway to heaven. <laughs> it's just a regular one pool ladder. <laughs> one step closer. <laughs> do you guys all have a towel? We have some at the back. Does anyone need more? Or no? Okay. 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 I'm walking with the thing. <laughs> I really hope this doesn't go to the bottom of the pool. This ladder's a bit big for this thing, but I can still walk. <laughs> Not as warm as you'd like to think. Uh, <laughs> 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 You're gonna have to go in this. Or no, I'll go in this side. Okay, come over here. It's nice and warm, isn't it? <laughs> it's not that warm. Okay, so I don't need that. So Sam, you should put your, put your, close your nose with your hand. So according to the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here we go. Tunes, bro. <laughs> okay, go forward so we can actually see you. Okay, according to the confession of your faith, no, first you better do this. According to the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Confession, I baptize. What's that? What? Am I going down? No, no, you trust me. I may not lift you up, but you're going down. (laughs) (laughs) You want to close your eyes? Baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Leg press, leg press. There you go.
camera. Give yourself a wave right there. Hey, buddy. Here's looking at you. So according to the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ah. Hey, you go,